How was your food? Was your food good? We're cool with being over here now, right? Oh, you need... See, he does this. Where, like, he eats some of it, but not all of it. So then you go in here, you just get a few. You go, oh, hey, but what's this? What's this? There's a little dry food in there now. Why don't you get that dry food? Get that dry food. There you go. Good boy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Friday. Did I say that? I might have said that. So I predicted that uh, I would feel like I got hit by a truck today because every time we go to Myrtle Beach, the next day, I feel like I got hit by a truck. It's, it, it's a combination of things. Um, like one of the reasons is it's a big day. We usually get up really, really early that day, and then there's driving, and we do a bunch of stuff there. And it's also been summer, so it's been hot. So there's a lot to it on that end. But also, it almost feels like we're cursed. Every time we go to Myrtle Beach, there's something that comes up like the night before where we have to stay up you know, a lot longer than anticipated to work on a thing or do a thing or try and get a thing done. So even – that just keeps happening. So it really feels cursed. So we don't get, you know, as much rest as you would want. So then you push yourself during the travel day and you use like all of your energy reserves to get through the day. And then the, the following day, which for me is today, you wake up and you're like, you feel awful. So I have not felt super, super great today. Um, but I've, I've made it through the day. It's now at the end of the day. And um, I wanted to tell a little story because uh, yesterday... Um, right after I ended the vlog, because we ended the vlog and we were like, we're going to go to bed. And, um, you know, it, it's been a long day. We're getting ready to go to sleep. As soon as I cut the vlog last night, um, there was a really, really weird thing that happened. And I, I talked about it on breakfast stream this morning, and, but I wanted there to be a record in the vlog too, because it was the most afraid that I have ever seen Kepler. And Kepler is typically not a very scared cat. He's not a scaredy cat. Um, you know, there there might be little things that spook him here and there, but he's pretty brave. Um, but yesterday, right before we went to bed, he was petrified. And I'm going to recap this story and um, I explain it, but there's not really a great explanation for why he was so afraid. So in the corner of the room there, he's got his um, his dry food, and then next to that is his wet food. And then in the very, very corner was where his water dish was. And uh, that's where it's been for most of the time that he's been here. Um, you know, we were getting things set up the first few days, but then it moved in the corner and it's been there for basically a month. And last night, uh, after we ended the vlog, we wanted to um, clean out that water dish because once a week Mal, uh, dumps it out and then, you know, scrubs it clean and basically cleans it up for, for Kep. Well, um, we hadn't quite done that yet. Uh, we had just given Kepler his dry, uh, his wet food. So he was eating his wet food and there was a bubble that had formed on the surface of his, uh, water dish of, of his water fountain and there was a little bubble and apparently he looked over and he saw that and it scared the crap out of him and I don't know if that is specifically what he saw um, Mal said Mal was the one that was standing over there at the time and she said that's the only thing that was over there but he stopped eating and he I mean frozen place hair up on, on his back and then like backed away to, you know, roughly probably about here. Like he, he was over there and then he walked backwards because he was so afraid of, the, you know, presumably the water dish and he had stopped eating his food. And I was like, okay, we well, got to eat your food. So he was visibly shaken. I mean, like he, I, I have never seen him that afraid of anything in my entire life. I mean, he was absolutely petrified of something I, the bubble? I, I don't know. But he needed to finish his food. So I got up and I was I was just trying to like calm him down and talk sweet to him and and you know, pet him. 
And I, I walked back over to his food dish and I tried to kind of coax him back over to finish his wet food. And it took a lot of coaxing. And he was kind of like G.I. Joeing all the way over there. And then finally, very, very slowly, he began to eat his wet food again. But when he was done, he walked away and was like, I don't want to go anywhere near that, that, that dish. Um, so in the interim, uh, Mao had picked, Mao picked up the dish and said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and clean it. So she cleans it and, uh, refills it full of, of new water and we go and put it back in the corner. And, um, you know, typically when we give Kep fresh water, he like meets us there and is excited and he, he starts drinking and he did not do that. And he would not go over there. And I tried to coax him over to it. And like, there was clearly a, a line that he was not willing to cross. He would not go all the way into that corner to drink from his water fountain. So we decided, you know, okay, well, we'll just, we'll just let him calm down a little bit. Um, cause he was still clearly very, you know, upset. So we sat on the couch and we watched a show. Uh, we actually started watching Bob's Burgers again. So we watched an episode of Bob's Burgers and uh, he got up on the couch, he relaxed, and I was like, okay, good, he's relaxing. The show was over, and I was like, you know, maybe we should put him over there and just see if he'll, he'll drink some of his water. So I pick him up, I'm holding him, I'm petting him, I'm talking sweet to him, and I kind of make my way over to the corner of the room, and he's still okay, he's like, okay. And then I go to put him down, I'm like, all right, buddy, I'm gonna just put you down here, you can get a drink. I had him just about to the floor. I was lowering him down and he realized where he was in the corner of that room and he lost his mind. I mean, he was flailing there. He was so afraid of being, you know, we didn't know if it was the corner of the room or the, or the fountain or whatever, but he didn't want to be anywhere near it. And when I put him down, he freaked out and he ran back to, you know, the, the table. So Mal and I are scratching our heads at this and we're like, what is going on? But one of the things that we I, we had noticed is that when Mao had taken his uh, water fountain to, to clean it and when it was gone, he was still afraid of the corner. It's not like the evil had been vanquished by the, the water fountain leaving. He was like staring into the corner of the room, even with the water fountain gone, just very on edge. So we said, well, what if we just move the fountain? So we did. We moved it over here. And we had, we didn't even have the fountain fully over here. He had followed us over there and he was trying to drink from it before we had even like put it down. So the problem was not the fountain. He was super excited. He started drinking from the fountain. Then we plugged it in and it was coming out the spout and he was drinking from the spout. He was so excited to get water from the, the fountain. Also, it's funny. I'm talking about it now. He's like, I'll go get some water from this fountain. He does like that fountain but he was still petrified of the corner. So I don't know why that happened. Um, and of course that happened once I had ended the vlog, um, but uh, that's, that's what happened. So we talked about it on Breakfast Stream this morning and there were uh, several theories. Some people said ghosts, which, you know, I, <laughs> I don't think it's a ghost. Uh, some other folks said, you know, noises. Maybe there was a noise or something that he heard and like, it's possible, you know, I don't think it's a re recurring noise because, you know, again, the water's been in the corner of the room for basically a month now and he hasn't had any problems. So maybe it was a noise that he heard briefly outside and it was something that we didn't hear, or maybe he just thought he saw something that wasn't actually there. I have no idea, but we decided that the best course of action would be to just leave his water dish over here for a few days and then move it back and see if he has forgotten about it because, you know, he's a cat and he does forget. He forgets things. So I'm, I'm hoping that it didn't like completely traumatize him. And in a few days, we'll be able to move it back over there because in the corner is a much better spot for us. Um, right now there's crap everywhere. So like, we're not likely to trip over this, but in the future, that would be one of the only things there. And it's kind of in the walkway. So I don't want to, I don't want to trip on it if I can avoid it. Anyway. Yeah. So there you go. There's the, the little story of um, Kepler being petrified. Um, still don't really understand, but I'm hoping that in a few days we can move it back and, and everything will just go back to normal. But uh, maybe use this opportunity to tell 
a similar story if you have one. Um, and maybe you don't because I've never experienced anything quite like this. I mean, I've seen, I've seen my boys get scared over things um, where, you know, they thought they saw something and they jump or whatever. But like to see him be this afraid, even once he's like gotten a little close to try and investigate, but still be afraid, I have no idea what's going on. So anyway, all right, I'm going to end it there. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to try and get some sleep um, just because I'm, <laughs> I, have a I still have a lot of recovery to do. I, I have felt awful all day. Um, and uh, I'm actually I'm looking forward to tomorrow because uh, Nintendo sent over a copy of um, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. And we're going to do that as our stream uh, tomorrow night. I, I don't think I ever talked about it on the vlog, but Chaz had a surgery, a routine surgery. And he's fine, but he's been recovering and resting at home. And um, it takes a lot on his part to run the back end of all of the Pokemon stuff for Pokemon streams. So we're just gonna skip Pokemon and do Xenoblade instead. And it'll be interesting because like, I didn't play two and I only played like 90 minutes of the first one. So I'm going into this pretty blind uh, for the series overall. So should be interesting, but that is tomorrow night. Thanks for watching. Let's meet back tomorrow, shall we?